Thanks for joining me again, learning about how to mix live music. Noise gates is the topic for this session. What are they and when are they useful? Like compressors, these were never found on a mixing console until digital mixers started to become popular in the mid-1990s. With analog systems, noise gates were always separate items in a rack by the side of the mixer. Now, with the TF mixers, there's a noise gate on almost every input channel. So, what does a noise gate do? Well, the clue is in the name. It will close the channel when the input level is low, resulting in silence rather than ambient noise, while allowing through higher level sounds without any alteration. If you have many microphones pointing at instruments that are only played occasionally, they will be picking up ambient noise a lot of the time. That will result in additional noise being mixed and amplified through the PA system. The mixing desk operator will not normally be able to switch the channels on manually just before the instrument is played and off again right after. So, a noise gate can be used to automatically manage the sound. However, it's only worth using on instruments that are played loudly or not at all, such as kick drum and toms on a drum kit used for rock music. If the ambient noise is sometimes louder than the sound of the instrument itself during quiet passages, then the noise gates will not be effective. The quietest sound from the instrument has to be louder than the loudest ambient noise collected by the microphones. That means it's not going to be effective on a vocal mic or wind and string instruments that are played sensitively at times. Even snare drums are often played quietly with so-called ghost notes or by using brushes, so they may not be suitable for use with a noise gate. So, we are going to focus on its use with toms. If you have individual tom mics, while the toms are not being played, they'll be picking up sounds from all the other drums. And this could unbalance the overall sound of the kit, so it's useful to cut their sound while they are not being hit. It'll make the overall sound of the drum kit more manageable, and will make the toms sound more pronounced when they are played. So, let's see what parameters are available to us on a typical noise gate. We'll need to look at the TF mixer for this. The most important parameter is the threshold. This is the point at which the noise gate opens and closes. Look at the input level meter to the left. Set the threshold to just above the ambient noise, but below the level when the drum is hit. Then let's consider the range. This determines whether the gate fully closes or just partially closes. For our situation, we'll keep the default range of minus 50 dB or so. That means the sound of this channel will be reduced by 50 dB when the tom is not being hit. Next we have attack, hold and decay times. These can be used to shape the sound creatively but we'll use them to keep the natural sound of the drums. Make the attack time very short, 0 or 1 milliseconds, so we don't lose the fast transient response of the drums. Next, set the hold time around midway, between 20 and 50 milliseconds. This determines how long the gate stays fully open after the sound starts to get quieter below the threshold level again. Lastly, the decay determines how long it takes the gate to close after the hold time is completed and the input goes quiet. With the decay, we can control how much ringing is let through after the drum is hit. Somewhere between 100 and 200 milliseconds is a good place to start. Remember the sound of the toms will also be picked up a bit by the drum overhead mics, so we won't be able to completely eliminate 
any ringing from the toms by using the noise gates. But the gates will help a lot. Take a listen to these recordings. In the first clip, you can hear snare drum and cymbals a bit, and a continuous roar from the floor tom in particular. The next clip has the gates on, showing how quiet it can be when these drums are not being hit. The noise gates are very effective. Now listen to the whole drum kit with the gates off. Actually, 10 mics are used in total. You can still notice the resonant roar of the toms. The last example is the whole drum kit with the tom gates on. The sound is much clearer and well-defined. Please note that it takes time to set up a noise gate effectively and it requires a patient drummer during the sound check. It's probably the hardest live audio tool to set up, so don't rush out and use it immediately on your next gig. Find time to practice with noise gates during a band rehearsal or by using a live multi-track recording. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's brief study of noise gates. We've almost completed our live music mix, but we haven't yet added any effects. We'll look at that soon, but next time we're going to apply compression to the output channels, both for safety and for polishing the overall mix. See you again soon.